Let's try a different type of example that we get with uh, concave mirrors. And in these examples, uh, sometimes you're only given, say, the focal length and the magnification of the mirror, but you're not given any other information. Uh, and you're asked to find maybe the object distance or the image distance, and it looks like you don't have enough information to kind of attempt the question. So, um, but I'll show you that you, you can actually use a couple of different equations together and sort of uh, solve two equations simultaneously and you can get all the information you need. So let's start with our example where we have a magnification of three uh, and we're told that the concave mirror has a focal length of 20 centimeters. Now we're going to get into the habit of writing that as plus 20 for a concave mirror because when we get on to the examples with a convex mirror we'll be looking at negative focal length. So we need to, and it won't specifically say that in a question, it'll just say a convex mirror or a concave mirror with a particular focal length. So you need to know whether that's positive or negative. So it's a concave mirror, we've got a positive focal length, uh, and we're told that we've got a magnification of three. Now in this question, uh, it, uh, it uh, suggests that there are two positions uh, where we can uh, place an object Uh, where we'll get this magnification, where we'll get m equals 3. So, uh, and we're told, uh, we're told to find out where are the, um, what's the object distance in both those cases, and then what is the image distance in both those cases. So, let's look at uh, where we get these conditions. Well, in one case, you'll have your concave mirror like this, if we were to do a sort of a very rough ray tracing of this, we would have uh, the object placed outside the focal length. And what would happen in that case is you could draw in your different rays and find that over here somewhere you would have an image which is inverted, but it's real. It's a real image. And in that case, you'll get a real image and the magnification would be three. Okay. In the other case, you will get a virtual image. So you'd have to put the object inside the focal length. Now when you put it inside the focal length you could draw in all your different rays and figure out that eventually you would um, get an image over here. This is image over here and this is image here and here's your object and here's your object. So once for the second case you would have to put your object inside the focal length. And once it's inside the focal length you would get a virtual image that had a magnification of three. So there are two different positions on either side of the focal point where you can place the object and you will get the, um, the required magnification. So what you're asked to do is figure out what U is in the first case and what U is in the second case and then work out what the corresponding V values are for, for those. So if we're to start and just try and attempt this question like we had with previous ones, we would write 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. And we would begin straight away by realizing that we could put in a value for f here. We would have a 1 over 20. Then we'd have 1 over u is what we're trying to find as u here. And then we'd realize that we don't have v. So we have one equation here with two unknowns, and that means that we can't solve it immediately. Usually when something like that happens, even in maths class, you'd realize there must be a second equation, and I can do some sort of um, solving things simultaneously. So. Um, let's have a look back at the magnification because that's the only other piece of information that we were given. So starting with the magnification of, um, let's take the real case. Now we had said, just again, uh, to look at, uh, at this broken down a little bit. Um, if you look at this equation, m is equal to v over u, you realize that no matter what you do, if we said that uh, if you're on the um, si this side of the mirror over here, the side where you can see the reflection from, if anything is over on this side of the mirror, we would count that as the positive side of the mirror. If anything is at the back side of the mirror, we would count that as the negative, you know, this, we're going to get negative values for anything on, the, on this side of the, of the mirror. So let's look at the case where we get a real image. Well, if we get a real image, U will have to be positive because U has to be positive. We have to place your object on this side of the mirror to get any kind of an image. So U will always be positive. Now for a real image, V will also be positive. So that means that your magnification will have to have a positive value. It will have to have a positive value. So to start with the um, real case, the real image case, we start with an m equal to plus 3. And we know that magnification is equal to v over u. 
So now we've got 3 is equal to v over u. And we can just um, multiply across by u here. And what we'll end up with is v is equal to 3u. Now that's the piece of information that we're going to use because we're going to sub that in to the other equation and solve for um, u then in that case. So let's look at the other equation now again. 1 over f is equal to 1 over u. And because we've got a value for v here, we're going to sub that one in plus 1 over, and instead of v, we're going to put in 3u. Now I've got a value for f that was given in the question. I've got u here and u here. So I've got one equation with one unknown, and I can solve this. So let's do it. 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over u. Uh, now we have to get a common denominator here. So let's look at a common denominator here is going to be 3u because they're both, uh, both denominators will divide evenly into 3u. So 3u. u into 3u goes 3 times, 3 ones is 3. 3u into 3u goes once, 1 uh, times 1 is 1. So 1 over 20 is equal to 3 plus 1 is 4, so 4 over 3u uh, is where I've ended up. And now if you're used to cross multiplying, you would multiply 3u by 1, you'd multiply 20 by 4, uh, and you'd get either side of the equal sign. Or you could say multiply across by 20 and multiply across by 3u. And what you end up with either way is 3u is equal to 20 by 4, which is 80. So u then is equal to, if you, um, it's going to be 80 over 3, which is 23.3, it'll keep going, centimeters. Okay, so that's u. Now that I've got u, I want to figure out what, um, what v is. So just normally, you know, normally for maths class, you'd be used to doing simultaneous equations. You realize it, you figure out what one of the um, one of the variables is. You sub that back into one of the original equations. So I can sub that back in here. I've got v is equal to three u, which is equal to three times, and I can just take the fractional form eighty over three, which would give me eighty centimeters. So in this case, for the real image, I get a real image at 80 centimeters. 80 centimeters. Right. Let's have a look at the virtual case. So in the virtual case, what will happen? Well, in the virtual case, my U will be positive because U has to be positive. It has to be on this side of the mirror. My V will end up negative because it'll be over here. So overall, my magnification will actually have a negative value. So we would deal with that like this. M is equal to minus 3 in this case because it's virtual. So m is equal to minus 3 which is equal to v over u. Now we do the same thing again where we multiply across here, we can forget this bit, uh, and we multiply across by u on both sides and we end up with um, v is equal to minus 3u. And that's the bit that we're going to sub into the equation this time. So let's start again uh, with 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1. Now, instead of 1 over v, I'm going to have uh, 1 over minus 3u, like that. So in other words, I'm going to end up with uh, a negative here. This is going to end up being 1 over u minus 1 over 3u. Okay? So let's sub in some values now. So I get 1 over, and f was uh, 20, still 20, is equal to, um, now I've got 1 over u minus uh, 1 over 3u. So how do I handle that? I need uh, common denominators here. And I leave my negative sign there so that I can do that. Now u into 3u goes 3 times, 3 ones is 3. 3u into 3u goes once, 1 times 1 is 1. So this time now, I've got 1 over 20 is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2 over 3u, like that. Okay, now I can multiply across by 3u and multiply across by 20, or cross multiply if that's what you do. 3u is equal to, and now I've got 2 by 20, which is 40, like that. So u now, this time, is going to be uh, 1... Uh, what do we have? 1 over, so 
13.3, yeah, 13.3 centimeters. Now we said that this is the virtual case. So this is the case where I should get a virtual image. In other words, my object should be inside the focal distance. There's 13.3 centimeters. There's my focal distance of 20 centimeters. So it's inside the focal length. So that's, um, that's looking correct. Now let's see if we can work out where the um, virtual image is then. Uh, the image distance, in other words. So V, we said, is equal to minus 3U. That's from up here. Uh, and I've got a value for U here, uh, which is 40 over 3. So I can do that. V is equal to minus 3 times 40 over 3, like that. And so, in other words, I get V is equal to minus 40 centimeters. So in other words, the image is going to be formed here, the virtual image here, because it's negative, is going to be formed 40 centimeters behind the mirror. So now with these two pieces of information, and knowing a bit of information about, um, you know, maybe ray tracing, or knowing the cases where I get virtual and real images, I've managed to solve for the object distance and the image distance for real and virtual cases. And that's how you do those problems.